I'm Lucy Fink and this week is five days of indoor gardening. Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to Try Living with Lucy. Give this episode a thumbs up and subscribe right here. And speaking of thumbs, this week's video is all about turning our brown thumbs green. Indoor gardening has always been something that I've found inspiring and aspirational. Not only do plants improve our air quality and teach us to be better caretakers, but pretty much every single inspiring apartment photo on the internet has some form of greenery in it. And sadly, I've tried and tried to keep plants indoors, but without fail, they always seem to die. Rest in peace. So when I started planning for this episode, I knew just the right person to reach out to. Future plant lady. <laughs> Maria Faella and I went to high school together. She's a Broadway star here in New York City, and her side hustle is hosting and producing the Bloom and Grow radio podcast. My first five years in the city, I was a succulent killer. I killed every plant I ever brought into my apartment. I literally and figuratively went from zero to 60 plants and now I'm living in a small one bedroom apartment with about 60 house plants. So if she can do it, then I can do it. And if I can do it, then you can do it. Before I started putting some greenery in here, I needed to dedicate the first day of this week to some field research. I went over to Maria's cute little apartment today and I took a tour of her setup. She has an herb garden in her kitchen inside of a grow house. She has plants scattered all around the living room. She's growing a lime tree in her corner. Tomato seedlings are growing inside of her bookshelf in her bedroom and so much more. That's the funnest part about having plants. Yeah. The more plants you have, the more you can spread the plant you love. So after seeing her situation, and taking a few mental notes for myself, the two of us took a trip back to my apartment so that we could evaluate my space. I have such window envy for you. This is incredible. Western facing windows are the second best type you can have because the sun starts in the east and it's burning hotter in the west. So you're getting stronger light than if it was an eastern facing window. Afternoon sun. Nailing it. The next thing you're gonna wanna ask yourself is what type of plant parent are you gonna be? The question is, do you want plants that you're gonna have to water every single day? Or would you prefer a more low maintenance option that can thrive even if you're not home every day or if you have a very busy schedule? For me, it's the latter. And then we just did a walkthrough of my living room space and we talked through some general ideas. I can even grow some food in the kitchen with a grow light. Many of you have sent me messages already saying that you've killed every single plant you've touched. And that's why it's so important to do this evaluation evaluation ahead of time so that you're already set up for success before you buy the plants. Today is the day when we really start going green. I took Maria along with me and we went to the plant district to do a little bit of plant shopping. Yesterday Maria taught me a few different potting and watering techniques. So when it comes to potting you can either keep a plant inside of its nursery planter which already has drainage or you can repot it yourself. If you decide to repot it, you'll either need to make sure that it's in a pot with drainage holes at the bottom, or if you put it in a pot without drainage, you'll have to make your own drainage system by adding stones or rocks to the bottom underneath the soil. You just have to be careful about overwatering and root rot, which happens when the roots sit in too much water. But if the pot does have drainage, you can either pour water right over the soil until it drips out the bottom holes, or you can just sit the plant into a shallow bowl of water and let the roots suck the water up from the bottom until the top of the soil gets moist. Because I'm a total plant newbie, I wanted to give myself the biggest possible challenge today. So after going to the plant district and buying our selections, I decided to repot almost everything. I got a snake plant, a money tree, a parlor palm, and a sago palm. The money tree was in a nursery pot that fit really nicely into my container, so I left that one as is. But for the others, I lined the bottom of the pot with lava rocks to make my own drainage. I took them out of their nursery pots. I gently massaged the roots to loosen up any packed soil around them. And then I repotted them in their new homes. I also got three smaller plants, Haworthia, Ripsalis, and a yellow moon cactus, and repotted each of these in a smaller pot that had existing drainage. Air plants were some of my favorites from Maria's apartment, and they're also very easy to take care of. So I got six of those to line up in cute little holders above my TV. And a couple of extras that were actually growing flowers to display around the apartment. These plants don't need direct sunlight, and to water them, Maria told me that you just soak them in water for one hour once a week, and then you let them dry upside down. By the end of the day, my comfort level with these plants had noticeably shifted. I started off pretty unsure of myself. I was scooping the potting mix with a spoon. I was very timid while I was touching the plants. But by the end, I was digging the mix out with my bare hands, and I was packing the soil in very confidently. 
I totally got the hang of it and knew what I was doing. Woo! And just one day later, I have 15 house plants. The ability to grow your own food and to snip some chives in the morning and put them in your eggs is the best feeling. It's one thing to own plants and take care of them, but it's entirely different to grow living greens that you're then gonna eat and nourish your body with. There are so many fun ways that you can do this, so today I wanted to show you two different methods to give you some options. First, I bought pre-grown herbs, basil, chives, and rosemary, and I replanted them from their nursery pots into a white rectangular planter box. It smells like pizza. I had to create my own drainage with stones on the bottom, and then after planting them all together, I placed the box inside of a grow house from a company called Modern Sprout. This is basically a glass and brass antique case with a strip of LED lights along the top. So you set the lights on an automatic timer, and then they mimic that gradual fade from dawn to dusk so that your plants get that perfect spectrum of light. Another amazing low maintenance alternative is just get the back to the roots water tank. So next, I took the plunge, literally, and experimented with some aquaponics. I went out and bought a blue female betta fish to put in my back to the roots water garden. I followed all of the steps for assembly and then chose to grow wheatgrass, pea shoots, and sunflower microgreens. The plant bed sits on top of the fish tank, so basically you feed your fish and then the fish waste fertilizes your plants and the plants clean the water. So this is a self-cleaning fish tank that's gonna grow really, really healthy, nutrient-dense microgreens on top that I'm gonna be able to put in my salads, my smoothies, and juices. And apparently it's only gonna take two weeks to grow. So if you wanna track the progress of my water garden, check out my Instagram stories, at Lucy B. Fink. I also took a poll on my Instagram stories to help me name my fish, and a majority of you guys voted for the name Buttercup. So guess what? I now have a fish named Buttercup. She's just getting acquainted with her new tank but I'm gonna go to the pet store soon and I'm gonna buy her some colorful plants and some structures that she can hide in. Buttercup is going to have the best fish life. My home is looking great, but almost every single day when I've left my apartment and headed off to work, I felt a little bit sad leaving my plants behind. And now I have a fish. I'm a busy mom. And now that I'm getting used to having them around, when I get to my office and I see my lack of greenery situation, it's a little sad. You're at your office five to eight hours a day. You're around a ton of synthetic material. Photocopy machines, your computer, all of these things are emitting these volatile organic compounds, otherwise known as VOCs. And these VOCs are just swimming around in the air and they're really bad for you and we're breathing them in. What plants do is through their like natural everyday processes, they actually absorb these VOCs and neutralize them for us. Refinery29 does a great job of this already and there's actually a lot of greenery all around our office. But I myself don't have any plants on my desk, so today was about adding that greenery into my personal breathable airspace. I went onto the Sills website and ordered a few plants a Haworthia zebra plant, a Hoya heart plant, and a parlor palm. They all come pre-potted, it's nice and easy, and you just remove them from their packaging and set them up wherever you want. I intentionally chose these plants because full sun is ideal for them and my window at work is southern facing and gets great light. And also because they're super low maintenance and they only need to be watered once every couple of weeks or so. I set up one final succulent on my desk from Lula's garden, and this one wanted indirect sunlight, so I placed it a little further from the window. And four days later, I have 25 plants. I have to say, I'm feeling pretty green. For my final challenge this week, I wanted to take on a bit of a longer term project. Maria inspired me to grow my very own lime tree. I figured it was easier to start by buying a pre-potted tree, so I got one from Via Citrus. It came in the mail, nice and easy. And then knowing that my western facing windows might not do the trick, I decided to set it up in the corner on a stool beneath a Soltec Solutions 40 watt LED grow light. It comes with a timer, so I set it for 10 hours of light a day. I made sure the light was close enough to the top of the citrus, and then I turned it on. This week has really changed my life, more than most Try Living With Lucy episodes do. And unlike most challenges, where I kinda just go back to the way I was living before, I've brought so many new things into my world now that are gonna be such a huge part of my day-to-day -day life. We live in this crazy, overpopulated, polluted city, and as millennials, it's really hard for us to unplug. Bringing plants into your home is such a great way to stay grounded and remember that everything is blooming and growing at its own rate. I have 26 plants, 
and a pet fish. And something tells me that this is just the beginning for me. I really hope this episode inspires you to bring some green into your space. I'm adding links in the description box below for some of the products I used this week, like my grow house, my grow light, my water garden, and more. And if you're looking for more tips on how you can try this for yourself, don't forget to listen to the Bloom and Grow radio podcast where Maria interviews tons of experts and learns along the way. Comment below and let me know what you want to see me try next. And in the meantime, keep on blooming and growing. Mwah! Hey YouTube, thanks for watching. Click here for another video on Refinery29, here to subscribe to our YouTube channel, and right here for my personal YouTube channel. See ya!